Hey guys, my name is Micah Watson and I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual and today I'm going to be telling you about these macro controls and also a little bit about how I made this beat that you're hearing. I made it so that I could demonstrate to you guys the three techniques I've been teaching in the past three videos. So that'll be chain lists, choke groups and macro controls. So first of all, let me tell you what these macro controls are. So at the beginning of each device chain, the device chain isn't everything that's down here in your device view. So this is your clip view, this is your device view. One chain is only what's inside this specific light gray box. This is a particularly long chain, but it ends over here. And this is where your next chain would start. Um, similarly, this is where my previous chain ended. And at the beginning of each chain on the left, you've got these little icons and you can hide things to make things look a little neater. And you can also double click on title bars to make them kind of disappear or just go small and stuff. So these controls can be mapped to separate other controls in your devices that may be out of reach. So for instance, I've mapped this little dry weight control um, to one of my little shortcut macro controls here. These are essentially shortcuts. So just like you can have a folder on your computer that's uh, linked to a different folder or it's like a shortcut, it's basically just a way for you to access something that otherwise would be a bit tricky to access. But the actual control hasn't moved, nothing's changed, this isn't a new device. So what happens when you map a control to these macro controls is that its actual control, like for instance this dry wet one that I just showed you, is over here and it gets inside the actual device that it lives in, it's grayed out and you can't change it and it'll have a little green circle. And this just means that it's mapped elsewhere or that another device is kind of taking control of it. So if I change this dry weight knob to 49, then down here you can see it's changed to 49. So that happens in real time. You can map pretty much anything that goes green when you click on map. Um, and that's actually how you map things. So if you want to map something, click map. And whatever goes green, um, like let's click on this Q, because I've already mapped these other two. Click on the Q, go back to your macro control, choose an empty macro control, and then don't click on the macro control, but click on the map button below it. As I click on it, it has now mapped the resonance, which was just called Q, <laughs> and uh, that's now where I control it. And if I want to undo that, you can just Command Z, but in a more realistic setting, if you want to get rid of a control, you're going to have to go to these macro mappings list over here. So when you click map, it goes away, but if, it's, if you click map and everything goes green, then on the top left you have these macro mappings, and you can go in and you can delete things, you can specify the minimum and maximum values and you can also invert these values um, so that like left makes the value go higher and turning it to the right makes it go lower. But I'm not going to go into detail about this. Okay, and the other thing I just do not want to forget to show you is that if you've got these multiple chain of devices inside a particular track, you can actually mix it inside your session view. So if there is a track with lots of chains, It'll get this little circle with a triangle and you can click on it and then it gets all these kind of narrow looking vertical track lines. And they don't have any slots for clips because you can't put clips in them, but they do all get their own mixes. Okay, so it's solo, let me play this. I can see all my different chops playing and I can change the volume. See there, it's skipped one. So those are all the levels for my vocal chops, and uh, my vocal chops are like a drum rack. I'm going to go into detail about them just now, but this is where they are. Oh, I clearly changed this dry weight knob, but <laughs> I must change it back to zero. So I can also go to the mixer here, my drums. I've got all my different drum samples, my kick drum and hi-hats and so forth. Let me solo this. This sounds terrible at the moment because I've got delay on, so I'm just going to change that to none. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through these three tracks. Actually, the bass I'm probably not really going to talk about because this was an afterthought. I wasn't even going to add the bass, but I couldn't resist. So I'm just going to talk about these two drum racks and explain how I use those three techniques, the chain lists, the choke groups, as well as the macro controls, just to get the sound that I wanted and also the sound that I can organically change to make the beat sound better, more expressive, with more movement. 
Okay, so I'm going to start with a drum rack. Um, I just made a drum rack from scratch and I just chose a bunch of samples. Got two kicks, snare, hi-hats. I made sure to have an open and a closed hi-hat so that I could choke them. <laughs> and I've, this was kind of my open hi-hat version of this. I know that they're not the same, but I just liked it. And with most of these samples, well, actually all of these samples, I got them from Ableton, just from my samples folder over here. But um, I tweaked a couple of them inside the sampler, but like basic tweaks. Um, let's get this one snare drum. For instance, this was this whole sample, which was just like, oh, these are kick drums. So this was just too many kick drums. So I just wanted one. So I just dragged the marker. So with my kick drum, I added a little bit of reverb. I know that's not usually what you do on a kick drum, but I had two kick drums and I layered them. So that was just the sound I wanted to get. But most of the time it was very simple. I didn't do too much. Every now and again, I changed the pitch, as you can see here, this one. I just pitched down a little bit, this hi-hat thing, wannabe hi-hat, tambourine. After my device, I added this audio effect track, and this is where your chain lists come in. So I created three different device chains. I've got a beat repeat, a delay, which I was probably my favorite out of these three, and then just none. So I could toggle between the three, and uh, with the soloed. So this is with my beat repeat. This is with a delay. And that's none. In front of the drum rack, I did have the opportunity to add a MIDI effects rack and use velocity and key changes in the chain list, but I didn't feel it necessary. But I just don't want you to forget about the fact that you can do that. But I did do that with my vocal chops. So, so I actually also made these kind of from scratch. I took a sample that was inside Ableton. Actually, I've got the sample muted here on my drum rack. Yeah. So what I did to that sample, um, I sliced it up, but I did get some help. I just took the sample in the browser, I right clicked and I clicked on slice to new MIDI track. Um, for more information on that, you can check out this video, it should be on the iCard. And I did clean it up a little bit. Like for instance that, there's a, it's not clean. I need to fade in, just change the tack a little bit. There we go, that took the little clip away, I don't know if you heard that. Um, so yeah, I just cleaned up these samples a little bit by dragging these warp markers around. I didn't really pitch shift anything. It's very basic, and um, I've got my macro controls here, so I've got, just got the attack. These were largely just default macro controls that came when I sliced to MIDI. And then, I didn't use any choke groups on here, but that does remind me, I did use choke groups on my drums, um, just with these two hi-hats. I did initially have more, but to be honest, it just wasn't necessary. I didn't have enough hi-hat samples playing for this kind of beat. And actually, I'm a little bit disappointed by this, but what I wanted to do was actually create the vocal chops and then create a drum rack with all my beats and then, say, on these empty pads, um, add the vocal chops. But you can't, like, mass move one drum pad to another. So one might think you can kind of just come on, click and control, copy and bring it here and paste into your chain list. But the problem is, is that the receiving notes are the same. So now all my racks over here, they're all multis. And so I would have to manually go in and change all of these receiving notes to some of these notes that are dark that haven't been taken yet. I actually started doing that, but oh my goodness, I couldn't be bothered. That's like way too much work. And then I thought maybe I can mass move all of these up just up one level, but you can't. You have to manually drag all of them. Um, so the best way would actually be to drag them up like that, and then you might not know how to scroll in smaller increments, but if you hit Command and use your up arrow, you can move your little viewpoint on your jump pad by just one row, and that's kind of what I would suggest if you're moving samples around by row. But anyway, I thought that was just a, too much of a barrier to entry, so I just had two separate tracks, one vocal track, one drum track, and I tried to make them interact with each other in terms of the notes. So I hope that gives you some ideas on how to start using these things in your own projects and inspires you to get creative. If you guys want these drum racks, let me know. I wasn't actually sure what the best way was to send them to you guys, like a Google Drive link or 
um, whatever. So for the time being, if you want to sign up, I have a mailing list where I send extra information out every now and again. You'll find details on that in my description box and I will send it out to you guys in the next week or so. And yeah, if you have any feedback on these videos, please do let me know. I've been trying out different things, like different ways to do voiceovers and, you know, incorporating a bit more music in my explanations. I'm not sure if that helps you guys or not, so please do let me know. It's an absolute pleasure to make these videos for you guys. Thanks for watching and have fun learning.